We have been looking at word to vec a series of factors that allow us to describe words using their context. One potential problem with any machine learning algorithm is that it has to learn from the input we can provide. Sometimes the input will be text, sometimes it will be recordings, but as we know, both text and audio from the real world can be biased in many ways. And we have the risk of having our algorithm replicate those biases. Here, we will explore the effects of input biases in the structure of word to vec and how it can, unfortunately, replicate the sexism, racism, and homophobia that we find in the real world. So we've been looking at word to vec It's an algorithm to describe the semantics of words, the meaning of words. We have a word, and then we take all the words in its immediate context the words that it frequently co-occurs with. And those will be the description of the word. We assume that if the context for two words are is very similar, then those two words will be similar. For example, words that share the same root, such as walking and walked, will have will be very similar between them. And this will be roughly the same similarity as words like swimming and swam which have similar relationships. This will also happen with many other words, the capitals of the countries and the countries themselves. Um, Spain and Madrid will be similar, and they will have roughly the same similarity as Vietnam and Hanoi, or Turkey and Ankara, for example. This process also happens to words having to do with humans. We uh, saw in our last video the relationship between uh, binary gendered words such as man and woman and king and queen. And the similarity between man and woman is roughly the same as the similarity between king and queen. So this is what word to vec is learning from the input we have provided, from the context words for man and king, for queen and woman. But the input that we provide the system will determine the output. The system is learning all of the good things that we find in the input, but it might also be replicating the biases that it had in the original input. Some of them obvious, some of them more insidious and difficult to detect, but those biases might be there for the computer to look at the context, extract them, and then replicate it in the output. One of them is biases in gender. So these authors here, Boluk Basi Adal, created a word to vec with 300 features and trained it on Google News data, about 3 million words in English, and found some disturbing patterns in the data. For example, the similarity between man and computer programmer was uh, the sim similar, the same, as between woman and homemaker. The similarity between father and doctor was roughly the same as the similarity between mother and nurse. So these pairs of words shared uh, relationships between them, but they shouldn't. It's because the input frequently associates the word woman with homemaker in its context. Um, or more accurately, the word woman has the same words in its context as the word homemaker. Because these two have the same words in their context, they're going to be similar. Likewise, the word man has words in its context that are similar to those of computer programmer. This is because of the context words. So again, man will have words around it like geologist, like um, businessman, like sergeant, for example. Uh, but woman will have words around it like maid, like nurse, like midwife. And so this will create a very different description of both of these words. There are some pairs that are described roughly correctly. So we would want uh, the distance between mother and father, for example, to be similar to that between sister and brother. And we also want to discover patterns 
um, new parents of the data. Like the distance between these two, mother and father and sister and brother, is similar to ovarian cancer and prostate cancer, which is a roughly appropriate uh, piece of information for the computer to find. However, there's many patterns that it's finding that are due to stereotypes in the input. For example, the distance between he and she or mother and father is similar to that between diva and superstar, except that diva has negative associations and superstar has positive associations. It's the same distance as between housewife and shopkeeper. This one has associations of industriousness and this one has associations of staying home. Likewise, lovely and brilliant. One is more associated with intelligence, one with personality. So we do find many asymmetries in the data that Word2Vec is discovering and replicating in how it makes its vectors. It's even worse when we leave binary gender and try to analyze non-binary gender and LGBTQ words. This is research from Julia Mendelssohn from Julia Svetkov and from Dan Jurafsky from last month, from March. As you can see here, there's a comparison between some between the word American and the word vermin. So we have the word to vec vector for vermin and the one for American, and we measure the similarity between them. This axis actually is distance. So a higher value means that the words are further apart. So American and vermin have remained quite apart over the last 20 years, but not so with other words like gay or terms for LGBTQ uh, people. For example, as you can see, those are much closer to the word vermin than American. And unfortunately, this pattern has been stable through time. So these are the kinds of absolutely appalling patterns that the computer is learning from the bias. I'm sorry, from the biases in the input. Let's continue this uh, voyage of despair with racism. Of course, the computer can see racism in the input. Uh, this author compared, I'm sorry, measured the similarity between words like black, Latino, Asian, and white, and the word criminal. And of course, found that the word black is more similar to criminal, to the word to back features of criminal than the other words. And this is not because of any objective pattern of criminality. It's because of asymmetries in reporting. And it's because whenever we have the target word black, it's context words in the reporting and in the text that was the input matched the words that people used to describe criminal. So the context words for criminal, the description of criminal matched the description for this one. This is because of original biases that were replicated in the system. This goes down to a, a terrible granularity, to the level of individual names. Names more associated with the African-American community like Turnell, Trevon, and Deshaun are more similar to the word criminal, again, to the word to vec features of the word criminal, than names like Jake or Matt. And this is because, again, uh, bias in over-reporting, and uh, biases that are found in the input data, not because of any actual pattern in the world. There is research about how to uh, de-bias embeddings, about how to remove some of these problems. As you can see here, uh, on the left we have male and female names, male under the line and female over the line. And we have their similarities with words like science with a cross, math with an X, and arts with a circle. As you can see, female names are more associated with arts and male names are more associated with math and arts due to the input. In the chart on the left, we have male and female names and their similarities to work and to family. And again, we have female names projected in the family dimension, male names in the work dimension. How could we fix this? We could use a type of vector arithmetic to fix it. In our previous video, we looked at how the computer was learning the a certain vector for binary gender, for the difference between man and woman, or king and queen, for example. We could take this vector and subtract it from the words for different names to try to account 
for these biases, which is the method that these authors have demonstrated, for example. We have uh, female names, and then we subtract the difference between uh, the word Duvek, man and woman, and this causes them to drift more towards the center, so that both names are both types of names, male and female, are equally associated with these fields. Likewise, with gender and career, as you can see, the debiasing brings the names slightly closer together. This is just one possible method for dealing with debiasing and embeddings. As a summary of this video, uh, text in the real world can be biased in all sorts of ways text, audio recordings, and unfortunately, all of our machine learning algorithms are susceptible to making bad inferences because of biased data. We looked at word to vec in this example, but every algorithm we have is susceptible to this, to this, and we need to take it into account when we're using it. There is research about how to fix this, but it is a problem that is always going to be there. And as a summary of the whole week, we have been looking at documents and words and how to turn them into features. When we do that, we can achieve a lot of things. We can calculate sentiment analysis. We can measure the distance between two documents. We can create clusters of similar documents. And we can even measure the meaning or semantic similarity between words. These processes can help us discover synonyms, find groups of words that are similar, and understand the relationships between search queries, for example, and search results. We also have issues that emerge from this, such as replicating biases in the real world, and we need to be aware of what our system is doing with those biases. Next week, we'll look at n-grams and how the frequency of each feature is going to affect or improve our predictions and our language models.